Self-interference can be a big problem with molecular signals. Imagine you're talking to a friend in a big empty room with nothing on the walls. Your friend might hear an echo when you speak because the sound waves bounce around, but it's probably not bad enough to cause a distraction because the echoes die really quickly. A similar effect is observed in molecule diffusion, but it's a lot worse. Diffusing molecules in a liquid are colliding with other molecules and they move a lot slower than sound waves. This really stretches out a signal. Some molecules take much longer to arrive. If you're trying to detect pulses of molecules to send information, then you have a problem. If your transmitter keeps pulsing, then you build up a background of molecules and you won't be able to pick out the pulses. Now, you could slow down the pulses to give enough time for all the molecules to get out of the way, but then you're sacrificing speed. I looked at this problem early in my PhD. We wanted to figure out how fast we could send messages using diffusion. This slow decay was a major problem for me and my PhD supervisor until my co-supervisor, who was a bioengineer, simply asked, why don't we use enzymes? And we said, what are enzymes? So it turns out there are biochemical processes that break down molecules to make them easier to detect. Yes, I said that right. If the breakdown process is at the right speed, then you can accelerate the decay of a pulse without destroying the whole pulse. The right enzyme molecule for your signal, present at the right concentration, can make this happen. Destroying your signal on purpose is a radical idea for communication engineering, and that was the biggest idea in the paper that we went on to write. In biology, it's actually very common. For example, this is really important for your neurons to communicate. The synapses around neurons are confined, and enzymes are needed to sweep away pulses so that new pulses can be detected. We were inspired by this natural breakdown process to design an artificial communication system. We showed how the enzymes change the communication channel between a transmitter and receiver. We used the simple receiver design to calculate the error probability. Then we measured how having enzymes lowers the error probability without making the receiver more complicated, which is a great benefit. We also recreated our results with molecule simulations. When I think about the paper on this that we published in 2014, I always picture that we solve this interference problem by using a broom to sweep away old molecules and clean up the channel. The idea was pretty simple, but it's gone on to be one of my biggest research contributions, and I think it's a good example for thinking outside the box on an interdisciplinary problem. If you're stuck on something, then there could be an easy answer waiting for you in another field. Thanks for watching this micro abstract. There'll be more of these. If you liked it, let me know. If you really liked it and you want to see more research highlights and tutorials on biophysical communication engineering, then you can subscribe and check out the other videos on the channel. See you next time.